Well, welcome to Mainly Motorsports, and we just gave our viewers a little preview of what's going to be on the show today. I mean, what a great event the SBM 125 was, and I touted it, and yep. I told you it was going to be, and, uh, you know, from the get-go, all the work that's done, you know, big crowd in the pits, you know, big atmosphere in the stands, you know, they, you know, it's one of those, I call it big game atmospheres, you know, and you don't see a lot of that going on anymore, and that's, you know, from the little guy that does a go-kart race, that's what I always try to do is make it the big game atmosphere, and that's what they're trying right, to do down yeah. there. You know, there's, it's like anything. you got some hiccups. you got some things you look back the next day or even at the end of the night. It's like, oh, we should have done this different or maybe that or whatever. But all in all, I thought it was a great show. I thought it was a great event. The team showed up to support it. Yep. And, you know, from the little guys, you know, to the, the guys that you expect to run up front, I mean, just the, the whole event was pretty amazing. And from what I heard, it was um, a lot of the heavy hitters up front and pa normal, but I heard there was a lot of great right, racing and side-by-side -side passing and stuff well, like there, that through the middle of the race. There's some strategy, strategy involved. And, and uh, um, you know, one of the things they do is, and we're going to show some, you know, talk about the heat action a little bit later, but, you know, they time trial, and that sets the order for the heats. Um, the only other time I've seen it kind of done this way myself was Pass South, back when we ran Pass South. So it's a little different. It's kind of protecting the fast guys, you know, right. puts them up front of the heat. But in saying that, you Doesn't take a guy like Teddy Christopher, starts seventh in his heat, and he's got to finish in the top five, you know, he's up on the wheel. He don't need much of a reason to get aggressive. So right. now he's not in a qualified position. When they drop the green, he's going to get aggressive. So it made for some interesting heat action. You know, obviously you expect some of the guys... I say we'll talk about it a little later, but you know, just everything they try to do the special awards. Um, really proud of the award uh, that we gave out the in memory of Ann Poole in the first car, uh, a lap down. And I actually, as we tape this, I don't even know who got it. You know, um, I think it was Teddy Christopher, really. really? And uh, you know, here's the award we gave out, so it was pretty neat. You know, that 22 in the picture that was the, the modified that Ann owned for Danny Poole and her son, so right. it, was, it was pretty neat uh, the whole night. and you know, it was funny, you know, see a lot of people, I saw a lot of mainly motorsport shirts walking around, a lot of people recognizing us from the show, and uh, really, a, really a great time, and, you know, kudos to Kevin Rice, who puts the event together, the Weber family, Star Speedway, yep. you know, the, the tech officials, all the people that, that came on board to, to pitch in to, to buy the t-shirts and the raffle tickets and, you know, all that stuff to, you know, that makes, takes that purse and, and, and puts it up to where it's pretty remarkable. Right, you know, and, and they also had their weekly stuff there, right? Yeah, they had three or four weekly programs. Right, well, so how could somebody go wrong? On, this is a situation, this is what we talk about when we talk about, you know, these situations and these big races like this and stuff like that. You got all this heat action, all the time trial action, you know, then the race itself, plus you got all the weekly stuff going on, so... It was more bang for your buck, really, if you look at it that way. Yeah, you know, and it was, it was neat. How people didn't, you know, go down to it. Like, I saw some people, I, obviously, I'm committed to Beatridge stuff, but I saw some people at Beatridge who I knew were, like, big modified fans and stuff like that. I'm like, I'm surprised you're here. I figured you'd be at Star, you know? Yeah. Because they weren't there committed for nothing, really, and so. Yeah, no, but I did see quite a few down there and appreciate the Mainers going down. And, you know, we had two Mainers in the, you know, in the field, yeah. you know? Uh, Josh Cantera and Jacob Doerr. And we're actually going to hear from one of them that, that, you know, I know when you look at the final finish, you're not going to be where he wants to be or where he should have been, but uh, Pretty was, was, was part of the show, you know. Right. So we've got a great show planned today. We're going to hear from the top three, show you some race highlights, some race action. And so uh, real excited, and as well as some special awards that they presented pre-race. So take a break. We'll come back, and we'll, uh, we'll get back into some more of the SBM talk and heat action as well as some of the special awards. Looking for something different and exciting to do on Friday night? How about real NASCAR racing at Lee USA Speedway? Featuring the ground-pounding, super-fast, super-modified, the fender-rubbing late model sportsman, unpredictable hobby stocks, and more. It's great family fun and excitement. Kids under 12 get in free, and there's acres of free and easy parking. Friday nights at Lee USA Speedway, located right on Route 125 in Lee, New Hampshire. Check LeeUSAspeedway.com for more information. 
Looking for a great time, great people, and great food? Then visit New England's number one biker destination, Bentley Saloon, owned by legendary super modified driver Bentley Warren. Bentley's is a biker bar that welcomes everyone. Staying in the area, Bentley's has their own full service campground right on site. Tuesdays, Bentley's cruise night attracts car enthusiasts from all over New England. Located on Route 1 in Arundel, Bentley Saloon guarantees a great time. Check out the fun at BentleySaloon.com and see why Bentley says, Who has more fun than us? Not sure what brand tire to buy? Town Fair Tire has them all. Michelin, Goodyear, Firestone, Bridgestone, Pirelli, Toyo, Yokohama, Hankook, and more. No matter what size or brand, Town Fair Tire beats all the competition, even online prices. We'll also do a free front wheel alignment with any tire purchase. Name brand tires. The lowest prices. Free alignment? Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. Name brands at discount prices. Town Fair well, like I mentioned earlier, Greg, they, they, they do time trials, which set the heats, which, you know, puts the top guys in the heat, you know, but pretty neat when heat number one rolled out, Matt Hirschman, who won the pole, uh, lines up on the pole, and then, you know, who qualified fifth was Ryan Priest, who, you know, him and Matt have got a, when I say a history, I mean, the history is Matt winning races and Ryan finishing second to him, and, uh, you know, they, they race clean, they race hard. Uh, and Ryan was having a pretty big weekend. I mean, Stafford, he won the regular SK race at Stafford for right. and the Whelan race. So Ryan is a 22-year-old talent that just, you know, got signed for Tommy Baldwin to run the nationwide race right. in uh, July. And then he's, you know, the Generation X or Next X or whatever it is with right. NASCAR, you know. So quite a talented individual, you know. So, you know, started right out with heat number one to, to watch, uh, you know, those guys do battle. And, you know, and they're smart races. You know they're gonna. They know hey, they're if in I the can, show. If I can, if I can get around them with ease, and you know maybe improve my starting position by four spots, you know because you would, uh, they're gonna do it. But they're not gonna go crazy. But then the top eight had a redraw anyway, so I guess it really didn't matter. You know, you if if you qualified first or second in your heat, you had just as much chance as the other the next guy starting on a pole. Right. So you know, it was real good. And then heat number two rolled out. Um, you know, like I said, Teddy Christopher starting seventh, but Kennedy was up front who won the first annual SBM. And, uh, you know, so every, all eyes, I think, were on Teddy and Old Blue, you know, number three. And I you know, really didn't have a great car, but Teddy makes up. You know, Teddy's almost like a Mike Rowe up here, you yeah. know. He'll make up for not having a great car. And uh, got himself into third and qualified position, you know, and then, you know, outrolled heat number three. And probably, you know, if you were there and you didn't have a, a hoss in the field, your emotional pick to win that race was going to be Les Hinckley, the number 06. Yeah. You know, uh, as we'll talk about in a little bit, uh, his car owner, Chuck Montville, passed away just before Waterford, the MRS race at Waterford yep. that we went down and covered. So they hadn't, that car hadn't hit the track. This was going to be their first time on the track. They had to regroup. You know, obviously there was two co car owners and uh, uh, Debbie Marquise and, you know, and Chuck Montville. And, you know, I mean, died unexpectedly. So it's not like, you know, hey, you know, this is all in the plans, you know, keep digging, you know, you just, you know, priorities in life change at that time, but uh, yeah. they chose the SBM to make their, you know, comeback, 2000, you know, 13 modified debut, and, you know, and they did themselves very proud, I mean, time trialed well, uh, started up front, won the heat, you know, and showed that they were going to be a factor as the feature rolled around, Right. and then heat number four was probably the heat that was loaded the most, I mean, just, just crazy, you know, you had, uh, Starting up front, you had um, Ronnie Silk, you know, who was the 2011 NASCAR champion. You had uh, Max Zackham. You had Tommy Barrett was in that heat. You know, Jacob Doerr. I mean, starting, you know, they thought they time trialed well, but they were mid-pack, and you know, and just and, the way things laid just, out. And, and it's kind of like luck of the draw when you have a yeah. draw in position. You could draw 23rd and think, oh no, I drew 23rd, and it, it, like it, it, the Oxford 250, so to say, and it, it could put you. Outside pole of the third heat or something stupid like that. Yeah. You, know? you never know. You know, I had Doug Colby, who was last year's Whalen champion, you know. So it was, you know, and Andy Sice. I mean, we all know about Andy Sice. And, you know, and then, like I mentioned, Tommy Barrett. And just to, once they got nose to tail. And, you know, big races, and this is another one of just my takes. Big races, you need to put enough laps on in the heat. So a guy that's got a good car, it'll start showing. A guy that's got a not-so-good car. His tires can't carry him it for the whole thing, right. and that's what you think you saw. And uh, you know, and probably the surprise of the day 
was last week's MRS race winner at Seekonk, Louis Mechelidis, not even coming close to qualifying. I mean, literally, in his heat, he didn't come close. And, and, and Star's Ponzi, like one of his home tracks. Yeah, really grew up on Star and Lee, you know, and yeah. uh, just nothing. I mean, I talked to Louis after, and he's like, hey, we just weren't good. You know, and they weren't. I mean, it wasn't like they just missed it. They weren't good at all. Right. Um, you know, one thing Jake had to fall back on was his provisional, so he did go into the Concy. Um, but, you know, Goodwin's car. I mean, he had the same thing. And it was what was pretty weird is after time trialing, they impounded the cars. They had these little things you could roll on, so there was a slit in the middle so you could measure your stagger. That was it. You could not jack a car. So I talked to Goodwin and the gang after time. You know, they had made a big swing for time trialing didn't work they were stuck with it for the heat yeah they came in and they were good in the concy they won their concy which put them in the race and you know that set the starting field so you know as they rolled out on the track uh you know they were going to present a couple of special awards and uh you know the chuck montville car owner award and it you know it was really uh they hadn't run his girlfriend debbie marquise was there to help present the award and it was a very emotional day for her we all know getting back around that racing family right you know and and and, and one of the things that i understood about this award because you know i knew a little bit about this going in was that that this award was going to represent like what truck uh, what chuck represented to the modified racing community as being an owner you know in in that series and in the community so yeah and he, and he did i mean chuck was one of those guys realized he's going to have in racing you're going to probably have more bad days than good right um but always willing to, you know, lend anybody a hand, you know, help anybody out, you know, walk around the pits with a smile on his face, always willing to promote modified racing, you know, heavily involved in the MRS. And, uh, you know, it was so fitting, you know, I mean, any car owner, to me, any car owner is a award deserver because they put time away from their family, you know, time, money out of their pockets right. to, to be involved in the sport. But uh, so fitting that, you know, the, the panel that was put together and it was neat because John Spence was pretty rec If you don't know John Spence, you'll recognize his voice. I mean, the Isma Supers, you know, Lee's on Friday nights, very, you know, MRS, very recognizable, knowledgeable gentleman in the sport of right. uh, motorsports. Uh, he did kind of the on-track uh, introduction of it, reading and talking about Chuck and introducing Debbie and everything. And uh, uh, really neat to have him involved and uh, really the recipient, first recipient ever of the award. And how fitting went to Art Berry, you know, owned right. Staff Co Racing and, uh, you know, been there a lot of years for a lot of guys, you know, that not only driven his cars, but cars that he's worked on, maintained, and been a big part of, you know, always, you know, they are racing with your own car, but, you know, guy comes over, he's got a question, always willing to stop and try to help that guy and get him a little quicker. He's going to have to race the guy later, but still, he wants that guy to right. be successful. So, uh, really, really neat to, to see that. And, you know, it was pretty emotional, you know, it was. It was real emotional, and then, uh, and then they moved into the pole award, which we all knew was Matt Hirschman. You know, I mean, right. set fast time, um, and that was sponsored by one of our buddies, Sean, Sean Waddell, Waddell Communications. Yep. Spent some time down there with Sean, and I'm telling you, you know, we, we don't have that radio outlet up here. That yeah. person that handles radios and scanners, and you know, I think I sold them another scanner set up in the bleachers. You know, people, I'm like, dude, you just got to get in touch with this guy. This is who you want. So, yep. uh, you know. You can find him on our Facebook page. He's got his own Facebook page. And, you know, anybody that's got his stuff, he's going to be at Oxford this coming Sunday for the pass race. So, you know, he's going to be at the 250. So, you know, and then obviously at the Northeast Motorsports Expo, which I hate to say is just around the corner, but we're almost closer to the 2014 one than we were to the, two, we are to the 2013 one. Oh, so, boy. you know, and I know I saw a lot of people using his services down there, you know, rental equipment, selling stuff. So uh, he presented the Pole Awards. So, uh, you know... We get that and, you know, enjoy this and, uh, you know, the Polo Award, hear what Matt has to say. And we come back, I'm going to show you some highlights of uh, the SBM, the third annual SBM 125 right from Star Speedway. All right, let's roll into some of our pre-race awards. I want to bring Sean Waddell down here for Waddell Communications to present our Waddell Pole Award for tonight's event being awarded to Matt Hirschman. Matt was the fastest car in time trial today. Matt, you're a former winner of this event. You know how to get the job done. What's it going to take tonight? 
Uh, well, probably the same thing it took last year, uh, but like I said, it's hard to, it's hard to repeat in these races because uh, you never know if you should do what you did then or change it up. So we'll see. I'll make that decision here after a while, see how it goes. Uh, you know, this is probably the best crowd I've ever seen here, so thanks for everybody for coming out. Uh, that means uh, hopefully we can continue to build this, and, uh, you know, in year three here, uh, it's growing fast. So uh, thanks, everybody, for coming. Hopefully you see a great modified race here tonight. All right, that is Matt Hirschman, ladies and gentlemen. How about a round of applause yep. for the guy who is the fastest modified in the house and the pole award winner. Presented by Waddell Communications. Today's vehicles are equipped with complex safety features such as anti-lock brakes, seat belt restraints, and airbag systems. Even collision avoidance systems. Not available in all models. Hi, I'm Sean Moody from Moody's Collision Centers. We don't wish bad luck on anyone, but even with today's technology, we need to keep our eyes on the road and our hands on the wheel. Moody's Collision Centers, now with seven convenient locations, Gorham, Scarborough, Biddeford, Portland, Sanford, Lewiston, and now South Portland. Visit us at moodyscollision.com. Award Champs LLC is Southern Maine's premier award supplier and official award supplier for many of the area's top organization and events. If you're in need of an award for a sponsor, employee recognition, fundraising event, or an entire sports organization, call Todd Mead at Award Champ. They provide the best for less with competitive pricing like the big online firms, but give you the personalized service you can only get from a local supplier. When you're in need of awards or personalized gifts, call Award Champs, where they'll help you reward your champion. Clark's East Side Scrap and West Side Scrap, two of the region's most efficient scrap yards. Both locations have the latest and greatest equipment, along with large capacity scales that are constantly calibrated to ensure honest weights. Car crushing, roll-off containers, scrap metal. Clark's East Side Scrap in Chelsea and Clark's West Side Scrap in Farmingdale. Don't fix it, scrap it. Mainly Motorsports TV, brought to you by Southern Maine Motors, out to be Maine's number one Chrysler Dodge Jeep dealership, Route 1 Saco. Bentley Saloon, Route 1 in Arundel. Stop by and see why me and my friends say, who has more fun than us? We do. When you're in need of awards or personalized gifts, call Award Champs, where they'll help you reward your champion. Before we get into the highlights, Greg, one thing I've noticed with modified racing you went to Waterford. Pretty uneventful for a while. They let things settle out. Yeah. Then it's when it gets into the, almost like that short track range, you know, that last 30 to 50 laps. That's when they get after it. That's when they get after it. This race was no different. And it was really, 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 really good, actually. And, uh, you know, so we got some highlights here. And you'll hear from third place finisher. And then we'll take a break, come back, and you'll hear from the runner-up finisher and the I don't want to call it a surprise winner, but the winner, you know, uh, who just makes it a habit of winning these big money races. So uh, and enjoy this footage from the SBM 125. <laughs> Drivers, start your engine.
Okay, we're here with one of New England's top modified drivers. Got some big opportunities coming in some other series, but uh, third place tonight, Ryan. I know you were looking for more, but you know, still a great battle up front all night. Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, we stayed pretty much in the top five all night. Uh, we saved our stuff there at the beginning, all the way up until after the pit stop, and when uh, the 13 and them were coming from the back, uh, or at, at least after the pit stop, that's when we started to move forward, and we got into second, and we just didn't have enough, and. We seemed like we were struggling forward bite-wise, getting off the corner as good as everybody else all day, and you know we got a little bit of homework to do, or uh, we got to check some shocks and springs, see if something went bad. But other than that, I mean, it was a real solid day, top three. Can't complain about that, and we'll be back next year. Yeah, you rolled the car in the trailer, and that's always good from a racer standpoint. And uh, but you know, Hirschman, I mean, how good is he to nail all them restarts? And I mean, you always got that chance to make a mistake, and you know, and having guys like you and Hinkley and Barrett and all that. I mean, that's not slouch a racing around you, but he, you know, he got it done and held you all off. Oh yeah, his car was without a doubt the class of the field tonight, and it usually is the class of the field. So, uh, you know, he's done his homework for the past few years. I think he's got a real good base for that car, and uh, we all have to catch up to him right now. So we're all playing catch up, and maybe uh, maybe next year we'll be able to hit a little bit better and be able to beat him. Yeah, and the, tonight was a great race. You know, there was some guys, there was a little bit of contact, but, you know, how important is it on a track like Star to stay at the front, even after the pit stop, stay at the front, try to stay out of coming from the back? Uh, last year it didn't really matter. I, I, I could Honestly, if you have a good car, you have a good car. You can come from the back. I think if Matt Hirschman started last tonight, he would have won the race. But um, it's just uh, track position is important to a certain extent because it makes life easy, but at the same time, if you have a good car, you can drive forward. This place yeah. is a very racy place. Oh, you're exactly right. Well, you had the two wins at Stafford. You came over here, put on a show for the crowd, you know, finished third, which is not where you want to be, but still, you made a little money. Part of a pretty historic race. I mean, this race has grown in three years. Yeah, uh, Kevin Rice and everybody here at the at, at Star Speedway, they've, they've done an awesome job, the Webbers, you know. And uh, I'm looking forward to next year, and hopefully it'll grow and become one of the biggest races of the year. Yeah, it is. Well, that's your third place finisher. Not where he wanted to be, but still on the podium. Uh, driver the number 40, Ryan Priest. Patman's Redemption and Agency Liquor Store is located at 95 Tanberg Trail in Wyndham, Maine. With over 400 feet of hard liquor and 15 doors of ice cold beer and soda, Patman's can handle all of your beverage needs. And if it's wine on your agenda, we have over 300 varieties in stock. Then when the party's over, Patman's can handle all of your main returnables, and we welcome all bottle drives. And if you're late for the race, drop off the bottles and pick up the cash at your convenience. Hey, this is Pat Man himself. Just letting you know that Pat Man's is your one-stop shop for all your thirsty needs. Hi, I'm Scott from Scotch Recreation. We just made a special purchase of new travel trailers that normally sell from $25 to $32,000. Right now, you can buy these for only $19,999. You'll never see this price again. And with payments starting at $179 and no money down, we also have brand new 2013 campers, not pop-ups, starting at only $89.99. And all new fifth wheels on sale, with savings up to $20,000. Scott's Recreation, Turner and Manchester, Maine. Not sure what brand tire to buy? Town Fair Tire has them all. Michelin, Goodyear, Firestone, Bridgestone, Pirelli, Toyo, Yokohama, Hankook, and more. No matter what size or brand, Town Fair Tire beats all the competition, even online prices. We'll also do a free front wheel alignment with any tire purchase. Name brand tires. The lowest prices. Free alignment? Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. Name brands at discount prices. Town Fair Okay, we're down here in the tech area of the SBM, and we've caught up with runner-up finisher Les Hinckley, and uh, first mod race of the year. And uh, you know, a lot of people that were here tonight obviously know about losing the car owner just before Waterford. So, how emotional is this deal for you and, and the whole team to come run well and end up with you know second place finish? Well, you know, it, 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 it's been a tough two months, and you know, it just took us some time to sort out. Uh, you know what we we're going to do and what we wanted to do and how we we're going to do it and and we got to that point now and and uh this was the right place to come to start with kevin and jim do such a good job uh putting on a race that pays well for us you know for the short track uh modified guys and uh so it's the right place to come but you know once you walk through that gate man it's you know it's nice to be back at the racetrack but you know where's my buddy chuck and yeah, no, and it's it's family. The racing community is a family, and uh, you know Chuck meant a lot to you and the race team, and uh, 
you know, so obviously riding with you tonight, but yeah. you know, you got to put that beside, you know, behind you when the race is going on and, and get the job done, which you did. Right. Came from the back more than once, and uh, at the end, it looked like you might be one of the only cars that might have had something for Hirschman if the race had gone long green. Yeah, I think we did. Um, you know, not taking anything away from Matt. He, you know, he run up front all night, and uh, they got in and out of the pits clean, and they deserve it. You know, good job to them, Matt's. Uh, Matt's a, Matt's a super talent, and uh, but you know, at the end there, we were definitely better. We just run out of time. Um, you know, we got boxed. We come in eighth, I think, on for the for the stop, and we got boxed in on pit road. It was a mess down here, and you know, just a product of circumstance. And we ended up coming out last at 20th or something like that. Marched our way back up to the front, but uh, you know, it was a good night. Um, like I said, it was uh, it's emotional day. It's uh, you know, I had a lot of pressure. Uh, I put a lot of pressure on myself to succeed for all the people that. Uh, stepped up and made this possible because uh, Kevin Rice uh, you know really puts a, a hell of a race together with Jim Schaefer and, and the guys on the crew and you know anything I asked for was just what can we do to help and you know it, that, that race and family to extend to your extended family it's you know we fight like brothers sometimes at the racetrack when things don't go you know but when you're down and out they're there to help you you know and there isn't anybody that hasn't been uh, helpful to us yeah well that's that's good and congratulations to you the whole team number 06 and uh, your runner-up finish here from SBM the third annual SBM and that's Les Hinkley, Hinkley driver of the 06 thank you well here we are with the happiest guy here and I don't know how much money you made but that's uh, that's winner Matt Hirschman the winner of the SBM third annual SBM race two-time winner now and uh, how big of a deal was this tonight, Matt? Well, it's it is a big deal, and it is a lot of money. Uh, you know, the track pays out. Uh, plus, uh, with uh, a lot of people put into this uh, Long Island Mod Maniac and uh, all the lap sponsors and the bonus awards that that are for this. I mean, it, it, it can be a real good night for for you, even if you don't win. Uh, and I'm just fortunate that I mean, we had a a dominating night here where we pretty much probably collected about every dollar you own that was out there for us to get uh, so I know it's going to be uh, it's going to be a real impressive payday and uh, something certainly to remember uh, it's a great field of cars here uh, two years in a row to do this I mean it's tough I mean it actually worked out that I had to I worked harder last year to win this just the way the cautions fell and I had to pass a lot of really good cars. Tonight when everybody pitted at the same time we were first in and first out. Uh, made it easier that way but still just had to, to be uh, on, my, on top of my game, no mistakes and, uh, and able to, uh, to set second year in a row. It's like I said, it's, it's not easy, it's something we really appreciate the moment here for the success we're having. Yeah, and you say, like you said, not easy. Because I don't know, you had at least a dozen restarts where you had to, yep. you know, you got worn twice, so you had to hit your marks, you had to hit, you know, high gear, yeah. and you had to, you know, and you had to leave room for the guy because I know it gets tight coming mm -hmm. off fourth. Yeah, and more. everybody outside you, you gave him plenty of respect, and uh, yep. I mean, you earned this race, you dominated. Yep, thank you. I mean, it's more uh, more restarts certainly than I wanted when you're when you're leading there. You want to get uh, get some of these laps clicked off. Um, you know, and I, I did. It was a clean run. I mean, that's the way I like to race. Um, I don't think I made contact with another car all night, front or sides or anything. And, um, you know, I mean, it's a, some good short track racing. You can expect a little bit of rubbing, but uh, that's not my style to slam bang. Um, you know, so I, it's a kind of nice, clean night. Uh, that you like to have here and uh, like I said it, it was a little bit tougher last year had to pass a lot of really quality cars and drivers um, but you just take them while you can I mean I uh, just I know it's not gonna be not gonna be easy to uh, to keep performing at this level yeah and uh, you know you talk about the quality of competition and it gets stronger each year and uh, you know some of the guys here and everybody took this shot at you McKennedy you know Hinkley Tommy Barrett came up but uh, you held them all off yes yeah, like I said some uh, the best of the best and uh, you know, it's just uh, this third year of this race. Uh, the first year, I think the first years are tough for events like this. Um, but I think what it took is it took what uh, everybody else out there seeing what kind of money was paid out. And uh, and then the second year it grew and now even grew again uh, in the third year. I hope it's something they can continue to do. I mean, I know it's a lot of work on a lot of people's parts. And Kevin Rice really hustles this event. Um, and, and like I said, I mean, he's not making any money at doing this, but he, and he's putting a lot of his time in there. But I, I just hope he continues to do it because look at the there's the best crowd I ever seen here. Uh, a field of 30 some modifieds. I mean, that's above what the tours are getting. Wheeling, MRS, ROC. Um, you know, it's just a great night. I, I really hope that they can continue to do this because they're doing an excellent job with it. Uh, if they were struggling with it. 
and you know, then I guess it just ain't working out. But they're doing such a good job. I hope they continue. To yeah, and to get support, like quality talent like yourself and some of these other ones. So uh, I'm going to tell you, I don't know if you got a nickname, but uh, I've been to three of these open mod shows. The last three, you've won them all. So I'm going to nickname you, when it comes to mainly motorsports, Matt the Moneymaker. Because when the money's out there, this guy goes and gets it. And tonight, a dominating performance right here at Star Speedway and third annual SBM. So congratulations, Matt Hurstman, on a big win here at Star Speedway. Thank you. Thanks for, uh, you know, supporting the race and uh, giving it advertisement. I know Kevin was on your show uh, leading up to this and uh, you know it all helps uh, get the word out there and that's why we had a good crowd here. That's right and you just heard it from the Moneymaker. We had a good crowd and it was a great race. So what do you think? The Moneymaker. That's a good nickname. I mean he made it. I think he led every lap but maybe one or two. I mean it seems like Matt Hirschman is out there and we all know he's talented obviously but it's like he's low profile still, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then you hear him, oh, he just took down another big chunk of change. Oh, he just took down another big chunk of change. Yeah. So he's going out, earning his paycheck, yeah. and not making a lot They're of not flashy. Noise. Right. They don't come in with the big stackers or anything. They got probably a 28-foot trailer, and they roll in, get the job done. Collect the home. check. <laughs> Collect the check and go home. And uh and uh, he was real appreciative of, as you heard in the interviews, of everybody that, you know, put on all the work behind the scenes, you know. And, yep. uh, you know, seems like a real good kid. Obviously, I don't know him, but, you know, I'm surprised he didn't make reference to calling me his good luck charm because that last three open mud races I've been to, he's taken home the check. <laughs> and uh, so he's, uh, it, was, it was good racing. You know, some things that, you know, uh, lap, I think it was 85, caution comes out. And everybody's allowed one tire. Right. Just one tire. They all put on the right rear. So they all came in, and if you've ever been to Star, come in the pits. Well, they use that main road up the center to come out. Well, that's where all the guys put their stuff and their sideways and all that. So Hirschman was like the first pit, so he was the first one in, got to his pit. Brick was changing tires for Jake, changed the right rear. Literally, probably rolled, came in ninth, should have rolled out second behind Hirschman. That's how Brick got it done. But they were boxed in. So I was surprised Brick wasn't flipping cars over to get them. Jake still rolled out sixth after. Right. You know. I heard that, I heard that, that was kind of a, a cluster. Though. Yeah, and that always is. I mean, I remember a pass race and last year. Mike Rowe getting T-boned from another car, Dustin Hubbard. In the pits, right. And, you know, the racing on track is great at Star. It's always a good time at Star and stuff like that. And everybody who goes there, whether it be a pass race, a grand, whatever they have, a, a big time race, the SBM, anything like that, it's always an issue with the pits. Yeah. So that to me, that tells me that maybe that's something they're going to work on for the SBM next year or, or the next big thing that they have. Lay it out a certain way so that People don't get boxed in in the pitch. You don't get guys coming from this way and this way. And, yeah. you know, because that's pretty much what happened to Roe a year or so yeah. ago. Yeah. So, so, I mean, that's one that's, thing. If that's all you got to work on, that's not but a still, big deal. It, that, yeah. You got to take out of every event something positive and something negative. And the negative, you need to make it a positive, you yeah. know? So, no, exactly. So, congratulations to everybody that competed. And, you know, uh, looking forward, if there is a fourth annual, I don't know, it was, you know, it's nothing to do with me. I don't have anything to do with it, really. So, but, uh, you know, help promote it. And, you know, congratulations to Matt Hirschman. You know, obviously great for Les Hinckley. You know, what a motivator for his team to sit out all year with what they've been, you know, dealing with, losing the car runner and come back. And really probably had something for the end at Matt, with Matt. And, you know, the other guy that, you know, you main guys, you're going to get a chance to see these guys the night before the 250. And... You know, at Beechridge, Tommy Barrett. Yep. I mean, saw a little bit of him in the highlights, and he put on a show twice coming from the back to the front, you know. Nobody passed any more cars than Jake Dorr and him, you know. Back to the front, back to the front, you know. So, uh, and then he had issues at the end. So, it will be pretty interesting when they roll into the... It's always... It, the mods are a good show, usually, yeah. you know, yeah. especially if they get a, a long enough race on a short enough track. And yeah, no, no, it was good. So we're going to take a break. We come back. We're going to hear from, uh, you know, one of the guys from Maine that had a really great run. Like I said, when you look at the rundown, you'll see the finish. So, oh, finish eighth. 
Doesn't tell really? the whole story. Doesn't tell the whole story. You're exactly right. So take a break. Be right back here on Mainly Motorsports. Zero percent financing for the first time in history on select certified pre-owned vehicles at Southern Main Motors. Southern Main Motors is selling so many new Chrysler, Dodge, and Jeeps that they are overloaded with great trade-ins. Now with live market vehicle pre-owned pricing gathered by electronically polling over 20,000 pre-owned car websites every hour, they will show you their competitor's closest vehicle and price, proof that you are getting the fairest deal out there. Visit them on Route 1 in Saco or online at southernmainmotors.com. Clark's East Side Scrap and West Side Scrap, two of the region's most efficient scrap yards. Both locations have the latest and greatest equipment, along with large capacity scales that are constantly calibrated to ensure honest weights. Car crushing, roll off containers, scrap metal. Clark's East Side Scrap in Chelsea and Clark's West Side Scrap in Farmingdale. Don't fix it, scrap it. Today's vehicles are equipped with complex safety features such as anti-lock brakes, seat belt restraints, and airbag systems, even collision avoidance systems. Not available in all models. Hi, I'm Sean Moody from Moody's Collision Centers. We don't wish bad luck on anyone, but even with today's technology, we need to keep our eyes on the road and our hands on the wheel. Moody's Collision Centers, now with seven convenient locations, Gorham, Scarborough, Biddeford, Portland, Sanford, Lewiston, and now South Portland. Visit us at moodyscollision.com. Mainly Motorsports TV, brought to you by... LKQ Core. Any part, any repair, anywhere. Located on Route 202 in Gorham. Scotch Recreation. Whether you're thinking about your first camper or looking to upgrade your current one, Scotch Recreation can help you. Get both our Route 202 Manchester and our Route 4 Turner locations and online at scotchrecreation.com. Welcome to Mainly Motorsports. To order copies of a show, send a check or money order for $15, shipping and handling included, to Mainly Motorsports, 326 Roosevelt Trail, Windham, Maine, 04062. And please add a description of the show. Well, here we are with, and I know you don't want to hear it this way, but eighth place finisher, Jacob Dorr. But yeah. What a great night for you and the little team from yeah. Sanford. Yeah, the little team from Sanford. We, uh, we, we worked hard and we passed the field a lot of times, but. Yeah, I mentioned earlier <laughs> in the show, you know, you and Tommy Barrett probably passed yeah. more cars than anybody. And, and I know rolling into the race, and, and all you racers, you're all the yeah. same. You know, you, you, you want that day to be good, and then when it really doesn't go the way you hope, you start getting a little frustrated. And, and I'm sure there was some frustration setting in on you. Yeah, there was a few times. The last thing you want to do is take that provisional that was rightfully yeah. yours and get in the race. But, yeah. I mean, you didn't just ride around and collect a paycheck. I mean, no, you raced. We, we uh, I mean, we practiced well. We thought we'd have a good qualifying lap. The qualifying lap wasn't exactly as good as we were hoping. Put us in a bad spot for the heat race, and we missed it by one spot in the heat. And... When it came down to it in the Concy, we could have raced our way in in the Concy, but it was just getting too dangerous, and we didn't feel like putting our car in that situation. We wanted to keep it for the race because yeah. we thought we had a good race car. We had a good long run car. So you know, and the thing about starting at the back starts a quarter mile track. Yeah. That's so a, you you can't. Everybody says be patient. Yeah. Well, how patient can a guy be when you got Matt Hirschman, McKennedy, Priest, those guys up front? Yeah, that was the one thing we were afraid of the whole time when we were talking about possibly using the provisional. We didn't want to because figured 15 laps they're going to be in the back of the field so you know we had to we had to move quick so and you did i mean you took your race and you know you had a couple early cautions and yeah. uh, helps you pick up some spots but then you you know it's like anything when you start at the back you know and if it's not a race where it's lined up by points yeah it's it's easy to get through that first 10 or 12. oh yeah and then, then it starts getting a lot tougher and that's yeah. what you did but you still kept picking your way off picking yeah, your we, way off and I mean, we, conserv we were conservative the whole way through. We were trying to save the cars we were going because we knew, you know, lap 100 or so, we were hoping to have the fresh right rear tire and be going from there. So we were conservative going through, but once we got to, like, the top 10, we wanted to get in the top 10 for a chance for the bonus money for the lap money. So yeah, that, that was a big thing We didn't us. really touch on that earlier, but, you know, the top 10, you know, they draw a number every lap, yeah. and the leader gets half, and the other half goes to somebody in that top 10. Yeah. So. So it was really a big thing for us was to try to get to the top 10. So, I mean, that long green flag run we had, I thought we picked off cars very well as they just kept falling back to us and we yeah. kept moving through. So Yeah, and then uh, the caution comes out lap 85. Yep. You're sitting ninth. 
Yep. Everybody rolls in the pits. Oh, we knew everybody was going to. And so. everybody came. Yep. Everybody except Todd Patton. Owned. Yep. Well, the shocking thing is, and me and you talked about it going into the race, last year you lost a lot of positions in yeah. the pit. This year you didn't want that to happen. No. You, you know, you went out and yeah. kind of got a little more organized, so to speak, yeah, for this. And I mean, it looked like to me that you rolled in ninth, and had they not had pit road blocked, you probably would have rolled out behind Matt Hirschman. Second. Yeah, we would have been at least there. I mean, I think it would have been close if, if it was an open runway because we sat for a while before we could even move. But Yeah, so you still rolled out yeah. sixth. So we, you, you passed three cars in the pit. Yeah. So that, you know, from a driver sitting in the seat, that already pumps you up. Because, yeah. you know, the guys behind the scenes are oh, getting yeah. it done. Now you want to reward them. And uh, you did. You stayed there. You, you, you got out yeah, as we, high as we fourth. We drove up to fourth. And from there on out, we started getting flat tire. And it started started to push a little bit, which everybody could tell. I mean, we're stopping in the center of the corner just trying to hold the car down yeah, together. So, so you're trying to stay <laughs> off the guy on the yeah. outside of you while the guy behind you is beating your back bumper oh, yeah, off. No, because he's getting his bumper. Oh, yeah. It's a chain effect. Chain, and, uh, chain reaction. But, so. you know, when you got the flats, I mean, what, what was your thought process? I then? mean, we were riding around under caution, and they kept saying that the tire, it looked like the left rear tire was down. Teddy Christopher reported that my had a flat left rear. So we are kind of riding around, and... I was tempted to pit right off, but we didn't think we'd have a car to come back through the field. And, you know, I started seeing the right front going down. And I knew, I knew if I came in at that point in time, the right front wasn't flat, so I wouldn't be allowed to change it. So, you know, you we keep going until we rode around and, you know, it finally came down and unfortunately came off in a big way. It came right off the wheel, but. Yeah. You know, so. so. But you didn't give up. No, you we. Know, you, you get up on the wheel. Yep. And drove back through. I mean, I couldn't let uh, the tire changes that they did and what yep. they went through for me all day. I couldn't let them down. Yeah. So. And you know, got a little aggressive at one point. A little too you aggressive. Know, and, uh, I get into Doug Kobe and my, you know, it was probably the right call. It was made. They put you to the back. I mean, I know the, the AB rule. The AB rule. I well, had to follow it. So. Well, uh, yeah, that and the fact that you drove. Yeah. You know, almost through him. You had every foot you had in the car on the brake. I'm sure. Oh yeah. Because I mean, you, you realized that he didn't know you were oh, coming. Yeah. And, you know, but then even I, then... I think if I didn't lock the brakes up, we would have hit... I mean, my right front would have been just in front of his door. But as far as I could back out of the hole, as far as I could get was just to his left rear. And I think if he didn't throttle the car up, we would have been all right. But, you know, yeah. initial reaction at that point in time, he's the figures he's going around, I think he could have saved it. But... Yeah. Yeah, so... But no, it's still... Lost uh, my patience and you know, had to come back through again. Yeah, it's come through again. And, you know, the, the problem that was happening is... Every caution, it was a lucky dog, yeah. so everybody's getting back on the lead Yeah, lap, so we're so. restarting like 20th now instead of, you know, the yeah, 16 so, good cars that they were at the end. You know, so at the end of the race, you would pick them off, you know, a, a three-wide move, and a couple of them, Robbie yeah. Summers and another guy, and, uh, you know, yeah. great move, you know, kind of got you some open air, you yeah. know, open track, and you were able to catch the next guys and uh -huh. make one-on-one moves, so, but really, I mean, you've got to be pleased with the day. Yeah, Eighth I mean, place, it, you know, with it seventh, had to have been exciting for everybody fifth, watching. Right so. in front of you. Right yeah. I mean, even the guy that ended up finishing fifth, I believe it was Richard Savory. I yeah. think he was fifth. His spotter came up to me after the race and said that he was telling Richard, just if the 05 gets to you, just move over because there ain't no sense holding him up. Yeah, no, you were really good. You you had a podium car yeah. at the end of the race. Just yeah. you know. At least top five. I don't. I mean, it would have been hard to get by. Yeah, Hinkley was good. I Hink think Priest was Hinkley, coming back. Priest. I mean, they're, they're difficult to get by. They know what they're doing. So, so I mean, now this sets you up. I mean, that, yeah. you know, coming to this, me and you have talked a lot this year, obviously, oh, yeah. with, you know, everything that we got going on. But, you know, this was a big deal to you because it kind of, you know, it can be a good payday. Yeah. But it also can be a good momentum builder yeah. for the second, you know, I don't want to call it the second half of the season. You have halfway. Is, but, yeah. but, you know, now it sets you up for that championship yeah. run over at Star versus yeah. Todd and Rumo and, and, and Todd who had a bad day and yeah. Josh had a bad day and Mike Douglas had a bad day. I mean, yeah, so just didn't work out for any of those guys. But no, so uh, just want to congratulate you. I know eighth isn't yeah. where you want to be, but uh, yeah. you know eighth place finisher at the SBM and doing us main open wheel modified guys proud and bringing it home uh, where he did against some of the best short track modified races in New England and that's Jacob Doerr right here out of Sanford, Maine. So we'll take a break. We'll be right back and talk about some things coming this weekend right here in the state of Maine. Since day one, I've been honest with you about the RV business and offered you some great deals with no pressure sales. Today, Scotch Recreation is one of Maine's premier RV dealers. We thank you. Last month, we offered a special on 50 travel trailers, and they're almost gone. Business has been good, but I'd like it to be great. We have pop-ups, travel trailers, fifth wheels, 
New 2014 models and closeout specials. The best selection in Maine at prices you won't find anywhere else. Scott's Recreation, Turner and Manchester, Maine. Looking for a great time, great people, and great food? Then visit New England's number one biker destination, Bentley Saloon, owned by legendary super modified driver Bentley Warren. Bentley's is a biker bar that welcomes everyone. Staying in the area, Bentley's has their own full-service campground right on site. Tuesdays, Bentley's Cruise Night attracts car enthusiasts from all over New England. Located on Route 1 in Arundel, Bentley Saloon guarantees a great time. Check out the fun at BentleySaloon.com and see why Bentley says, who has more fun than us? Hey, I'm Kyle Busch, and when I'm in Maine, I watch mainly motorsports. Well, my big deal this week is Wiscasset Speedway's mainly motorsports night. We're going to come up, we're going to bring the set, we're going to tape, you know. I'm sure it's going to be a, a great time, and I'm sure you've got some zany Well, and they stuff. do, too. You know, they, they're encouraging if you go to the races... You know, bring your bike. They're going to have bike races for the kids. We're giving away a bunch of bikes from the Nelcar teams. Just, you know, they're going to do some special awards. Lee from Four Seasons Synthetics coming up. We're going to blow off some T-shirts into the stands. We're going to give away a bunch of prizes and, uh, you know, just really excited. I mean, really, you know, we're doing the awards. Uh, yep. You know, Todd Mead, who award champs, and anybody that was at the SBM saw what we gave away for top three. Well, maybe you didn't. You might have left before they brought them out on the front stretch to have them presented. But, uh, you know, you, there was some big hardware. Right. Big hardware. Because, you know, that's one thing about anything you're involved in is you, you're a true believer in, if, especially if it's a big race, given big trophies. Well, you've got to. If it's big, right. you've got to go big. Right. You can't go big. You know what I mean? It's like having turkey dinner and at the end of it eating vanilla pudding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why you have six or seven pies and all that stuff. I mean, what are you gonna? If you're gonna go big, you stay big, right? Right. right. You know what they say? Big shoes, big hands. Big gloves, big socks. <laughs> right? No, big feet, big hands, big gloves, big socks. Right? So if you're gonna go big, you got to stay big right. from start to finish. So that's what we do, and so we're doing a lot up there, and really appreciate. And uh, Richard and Vanessa, Vanessa is very excited to have us come up. Ken mine it, and. Uh, you know, I'm going to be a lot more involved up there and uh, on the track, off the track, running around, you know. They wanted to get me a ride and something, but, you know. Hopefully you don't run out of your sneakers like you did at your first go-kart event. Was that pretty impressive? <laughs> Have you ever seen a promoter run out of their sneakers? <laughs> All right. But a uh, couple little shout-outs we want to go. Uh, I know you've got one, you know. The, uh, yeah, the Ford Racing, you know, obviously we don't cover a lot of national stuff and yeah. stuff like that, but... You know, last weekend's cup race in Michigan, Greg Biffle won the race, and it was Ford's 1,000th win in, out of the top three divisions in Yeah, so they were able NASCAR. to pick it up because Hendrick couldn't keep a motor or tires on the <laughs> right. guys. And, uh, but, uh, you know, and obviously, you know, condolences to the Leffler family and, you know, right. NASCAR, you know, suffering a loss even though he was in a sprint car. So. Yeah, and, you know, that's – it should teach people that it doesn't matter who you are – and can reach down and slap you at any oh, yeah. time. Oh, it's time. And, but it also should teach people that, and I'm sure that Jason had the proper safety oh, equipment. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. And it was just like a freak wreck and freak stuff thing. like that. But it should, it should challenge people, especially at the short track level, to get out and buy better seats, buy better Make fire sure suits, buy better need. belts, Make buy sure good helmet. Make sure you everything right. you need. And I want to throw a quick shout out to Glenn Luz, finishing at third in the act race. Uh, over there at Canaan, you know, and yep. a great run for him. His team, they haven't started the year off. I know they had big expectations with a couple of Austin Terrio crew members coming over and building yep. a new car, and, you know, maybe it's starting to click now before he gets into some of the bigger races throughout right. the yep. year. So we're going to take a break. We come back. We'll show you results from all over Maine, parts of New Hampshire this past weekend, and uh, we hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Mainly Motorsports, and we'll be there next week. Award Champs LLC is Southern Maine's premier award supplier and official award supplier for many of the area's top organization and events. If you're in need of an award for a sponsor, employee recognition, fundraising event, or an entire sports organization, call Todd Mead at Award Champ. They provide the best for less with competitive pricing like the big online firms, but give you the personalized service you can only get from a local supplier. When you're in need of awards or personalized gifts, call Award Champs, where they'll help you reward your champion. Mainly Motorsports TV, brought to you by Moody's Collision Centers, now with seven convenient locations, Gorham, Scarborough, Biddeford, Portland, Sanford, Lewiston, and now South Portland. 
Visit us at moodyscollision.com. Clark's Car Crushing. Vought and guaranteed honest weights with top dollar being paid. Looking for something different and exciting to do on Friday night? How about real NASCAR racing at Lee USA Speedway? Featuring the ground-pounding, super-fast, super-modified, the fender-rubbing late model sportsman, unpredictable hobby stocks, and more. It's great family fun and excitement. Kids under 12 get in free, and there's acres of free and easy parking. Friday nights at Lee USA Speedway. Located right on Route 125 in Lee, New Hampshire. Check LeeUSAspeedway.com for more information. Start your engine! 